and welcome to another episode of Dear ABG, where we answer your questions and give advice. Before we begin with our listener submitted questions, we're going to answer a random fun question.、Um, and today's question of the day is In a horror movie, which of the three of us would survive? I already know the answer. What's the, answer? What's the answer? I think I'll be the first to die. I- <laughs> and then Janet, sorry, and then Helen will survive. Really? You're more like. My guess is gonna be Helen. Helen as well.、She's, really? You're like a little bit more like a. Sassy is not the right word, but. More gritty. Like, yeah. yeah. Gritty. Okay.、Uh, in the context of a horror movie, I think I would die. What?、Really? Yes. In the context of like survival mode, maybe,、mm. but. Hor- like the last horror movie I've seen is The Ring, which is back in 2002.、Mm. I think my instinct, if something scary were to happen, like if I'm at home and I hear a sound and、mm-hmm. there's a creaks in the board and things like that, my instinct is to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> yes! I will, I will hide under the covers and try to escape the reality that I'm in. This,、oh, is, this is like facts. facts. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. I thought she held me like I'm gonna, I'm gonna find like a like a like a like a rake or、yeah. like a bat and get ready for combat. No, That's what I imagined as、yeah. well. No, no, no. I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, Janet. What what role would you think you play in a, in a horror movie? Oh, I think I would. I might. I think I would try to fight at first, but I would get to the point where I'd freak out. But I think it's like if it's. Yeah, I think the natural reaction I'm gonna be more anxious and be like, I yeah, need to do yeah, something. Yeah. And then eventually, if they, I get cornered, then I'm just like,、yeah. there's a part of me that thinks that if there's a moment where you know you're gonna die, this sounds really morbid, but you just kind of accept it. Ooh, and then, and then it's like not as like, yeah. That's going at peace. <laughs> yeah. How about for you? To be honest, so I did, I'm, I'm afraid of horror movies, but I kind of do enjoy watching from time to time. And. I already have an exit plan or where I would hide in my house. Like, I always thought、mm. about this.、Ooh. Oh. But I always thought I wouldn't survive because I'm not very good. I feel like I'd be like, I'll freeze, but I'll try to do my best to hide.、Mm-hmm. Uh, or go to sleep under the covers, <laughs> right? That's hiding. Like, you just pretend you're part of the bed, go as flat as you can. Like, yeah, there's, hello, what's that lump over there? <laughs> It's obviously a person, but like, there, I feel like in terms of your house, you're like, there's some places that no one knows where yeah, secret yeah. places are.、Uh, so,、mm. I would hide. but... I think in a movie, character wise, I would, I would be the one that dies first. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna check out the refrigerator or something. And then like, the killer is like, boom. It's always the one that separates from the group first. Okay. okay. I would never do Maybe my sleeping tactic would win here because you'd be looking for, for food. food and you'll be in the corner like, okay, take me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> Our first listener submitted question today comes from JJ.、Ooh. JJ asks, Would love to hear what you three have to say on makeup, how makeup has impacted you, and what you wish for young women to know as they learn about it. I know I get so intimidated going into Sephora and always buying the wrong makeup,、mm. i.e., putting concealer all over my face instead of foundation, etc. I'm still learning today. Thanks.、Mm. Love the stories. That's a good question. For me, JJ,、um, I think I'm really fortunate to have grown up with a lot of aunts in my family. So I remember for not like, not c r e e p y I don't know what you're thinking. Not the two aunts. Not the two aunts. <laughs> <kind. laughs> <laughs> a lot of aunties, aunties, aunties. But I remember for a Christmas gift, she gave me like a Bobbi Brown makeup set.、Mm-hmm. And it was all very like natural colors, like, like tan, neutrals, like a light pink for blush.、Mm-hmm. And she, was, she gave me a book about how to apply makeup. She said, you know, I want to, as you begin, you know, starting to put on makeup, I want to start you off on a kind of basic level.、Mm-hmm. Don't feel pressured to put on all this stuff on your face. And like, kind of, she kind of taught me a lot about like natural beauty and like just using products that enhance your beauty, not cover it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so,、great. I remember from a young age, I always use like natural colors.、Um, in terms of like Sephora, JJ, like honestly, I'm on the same page. Like, when it comes to like finding the right products, I still don't know what I'm using. And I, I refer to YouTube a lot for like, you know, what are some of the like influencers that I feel like I look similar, similar as? What products are they using? Like, what are they endorsing? And then I go to Sephora and I see the product for myself. And honestly, don't be afraid to ask for help from the people who work there. Like,、mm-hmm. they know the product more than us, probably. and... They just ask you questions like, you know, what's your skin type? You know, what kind of coverage are you looking for? And they give you like recommendations. And the best thing about Sephora is that they give you a sample. So you don't have to buy the product right away. So for me, it's like, ooh, life hack. I don't have to buy the whole product to try it. So they give you a small sample, you try it. If you like it, you could buy it. So always ask for help there. Try it, like it, buy, buy it. it.、Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So. And. 
So that's yeah, that's my experience with makeup. So how about yeah. you, ladies? I think I started trying makeup in eighth grade, which mm -hmm. is like pretty young. Um, throughout my childhood, my mom was always like, don't wear makeup. So it was always a thing where it's just like, don't even put it on your face. Mm -hmm. And I think it wasn't until eighth grade when one of my friends brought makeup to school and we were in the bathroom, I still remember this, and we were just like putting on blush and eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. And I looked so stupid. And I think from that point on, I just stopped wearing makeup. And it wasn't until college that I started minimally wearing makeup, no foundation, just like eyeliner, eyeshadow. Um, I didn't know how to do my brows until like three years ago, That's maybe. Me too. Thanks, yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Sephora is a great place to just like start off by asking them for help of like how do you put on foundation or which foundation match my color and things mm -hmm. like that. And they can help you with that in the, like the most popular um, types out there. And YouTube is also very helpful. For us, we didn't grow up with YouTube and makeup tutorials, so I think there was much more of like a trial and error and looking really bad. But I would say that advice for the young like girls out there that are listening, um, don't put so much pressure on yourself to, you know, try and get like the Kylie Jenner face. Mm -hmm. I think right now I'm seeing so many young girls look way older Dude, yeah. than they should look. And there's a part of me that feels really sad. I feel like their innocence is just like stripped away from them because you do want to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then you start surrounding yourself by people that look that way too. And I think at that age, you also haven't built the internal confidence to feel confident inside and you rely on your face and your makeup. So if I could give a piece of advice, it's to try and surround yourself with people that won't care about that so early on in life. I agree. Yeah, it's a great message. Yeah, I think along with that, on a practical level too, um, it's damaging to your skin to wear lots of layers of makeup, right? Mm -hmm. So just in terms of like preventative skincare, and if you're starting when you're like 13 and 15 and putting on makeup, like imagine what might happen in 10 years and you're only going to be 25, and if you're putting like you know, a shit ton of like stuff on your eyes yeah. and on your face and stuff. It's like, it's not good for the long run too. I think for me, my experience with makeup, um, actually my first experience with makeup was when I was like five through dance recitals. Oh. So I had a very, and like stage makeup is like extreme. Yeah. Like it was like blue eyeliner and like red lipstick. Um, so I think because that was my first introduction, I always first saw makeup as like stage stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually started wearing it, um, like for myself day to day, I went the opposite extreme of going really natural, probably because I was just like, yeah. like tired or like associated with uh, performing. Um, and like Helen said, there was no YouTube, you know, when we yeah. were growing up, but I was a huge fan of like, you know, Seventeen Magazine and all those mm -hmm. like teeny bopper things. So I feel like that was like my inspiration. I think, you know, when it comes to makeup, experimenting and playing with it is fun. I definitely went through a phase where I was, because it was like stage makeup, I went through, like I loved playing with the colors of things. Um, but in terms of like, or I love playing with the colors of things, kind of like with nail polish, it was like a way to express yourself. Mm -hmm. But that was always kind of my like play time when I was younger. And then when I would actually go day to day for makeup, um, I went more minimal. And I think a lot of it is like thinking about like not wanting to put a bunch of stuff on your skin all the time. So I'd encourage if you look at makeup as like a way of expression, it can be really nice. But um, just be careful to not become reliant on it for like a base level of feeling confident in yourself. Mm. Yeah. All right, so our next question comes from Kelly. She said, I recently got out of a one year and 10 months relationship because I found out he was cheating on me. Mm. How do you deal with being cheated on? I haven't been single for a while. So how do you deal with being independent and single and learning to truly love yourself? Mm. Um, this is a tough one. I've never been cheated on, so I can't really speak to the experience, but I can imagine how gut-wrenching that type of an experience really is. First, I think it's important to address your physical and emotional needs, especially if this happened pretty recently. Write down what your coping mechanisms are gonna be, because I can imagine that you would spiral into negativity for a long period of time, but I think with any traumatic experience, it's important to be brutally honest with you know, what happened and to not minimize those feelings that are associated with it and not just go out into the world and be like, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm powerful, I'm strong, I can get over this. You know, it's important to just let it settle in so that you can actually try and move on from it. And it won't be, you know, maybe not in the next month and it'll take a while, but lean on friends, lean on therapy, um, and just make sure to take care of yourself first. Kelly, I'm so sorry to hear about that experience. I can only imagine how challenging it is and what you're going through right now. Um, one thing that might be helpful is, you know, you have this person that you might have been spending a lot of your time and energy on. Uh, now that you don't have that obligation anymore, it might be a good opportunity to focus on the other relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so those with your family and your friends, um, to, you know, actively talk to them to help you kind of process what's happening, uh, but then also just in terms of like spending the hours in your day and strengthening those relationships. And just to add on what Janet said, like just remember that his actions are not a representation of your value and your worth. So I would actually really use this time to like better understand yourself and you know some action items that I've taken to like really better understand 
me when I was going through a breakup and to, and to find independence again, it was like to journal and to write out your affirmations. I think you have to remind yourself like, what are you confident in? What do you know and love about yourself? Sometimes you need to remind yourself by writing it out. Um, another thing is to challenge yourself to be alone and do activities by yourself. One thing I figured out was that I actually really enjoy going to the movies by myself because this is the only time that I can be stripped away from my phone because a lot of times that I would just be on my phone on social media and I'd be just spiraling out. So whether it's now you just pop on a movie at your house, put your phone away and just focus on the movie. All right, and the last thing I would say to do is just write out a list of things you want to do that spark happiness, right? You know, one quote that I am you know, living by right now is like, happiness is created, it's not given to you. So just find activities that you want to try and do and you could see yourself evolving and you'll be on this new path of Kelly. So good luck Kelly and we hope everything will turn out better after this. And so now we're gonna play a voicemail that we got from one of our listeners. Her name is Rachel. Hi, ABG, this is Rachel. Um, I was just wondering what mistakes you guys made when you were in your 20s and like what regrets do you have or what advice do you have? I know Mel still in her 20s, um, but I was just wondering if you guys have any general advice. Thanks. Barely. She barely <laughs> in her 20s. I know. Last six months. Six months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Half a year. Oh, wow. Well, my half birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this is a great question, Rachel. Um, if I reflected back on my 20s, and I, I feel like I'm a totally different person in my 30s. Mm. I don't know if you ladies have that. Even late 20s. Early you can't 20s. feel that yet. <laughs> You're going to be transformed in about six yeah. months. Now. You'll be a totally butterfly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But, and I would say the thing that stands out the most to me is like in my 20s, I was so focused on trying to prove myself. Mm. And I think mostly to myself, like everything from career to social life, everything, like where I lived, all those things, I wasn't conscious of it, right? Mm. But I felt like I was I was constantly like in this ambitious cycle and like, for what? Mm. Um, and so if I could go back and tell my 20 year old self something, it would be, this is gonna sound really woo and stuff, but the key is not to focus on yourself, but to focus on what you can give or other, other people or other, your community. Um, because honestly, I feel like that's the catch 22. If you keep trying to figure out how to make yourself better, serve your ego, that's like a never, you're never gonna win. Versus if you start mm. focusing outward, um, that's where you'll actually start to be able to feel more like at ease and just like chill the fuck out. Is that your regret? Um, that's a good question. I don't know that it, I maybe don't regret that because I don't think I would be where I am or have the uh, values that I do now had I not experienced that in my twenties. That's a good piece yeah. of advice, though. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely thirty-year-old. Lovely. Thirty plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you, ladies? <laughs> um, I think like Janet, I don't have regrets in life. There are things I like. If I could go back, I wish um, I could try something, you know? But like for me, I think I've been talking to them. I wish I was able to travel abroad more or mm. live abroad more in my, in my 20s. In my, cause I'm, I'm in my last year now, so I'm just like, oh, I wish I, I wish I lived abroad. Because I didn't study abroad in college. I wish I did that. Um, but no regrets regardless. Um, but I think hearing Helen and Janet's story, you know, living in Kenya or going to Spain and India for a couple of months and living there, I was like, you know, that sounds like such a wonderful experience. and. You know, living in Asia has always been like in the back of my mind and like a little dream. And so that's something I can still do to this day. So uh, not, it's not a regret, but something I am wanting, I'm longing to do mm. that's trickling from my early 20s. Yeah, I think that's a good one. And mm. I, could, I could tell like every, during this quarantine period, like Mel's always talking about the next trip. Like, where are we going next? Where are we going next? <laughs> it's always the, the point of conversation. Yeah. And now it's what, Taiwan? You wanna Taiwan, try yeah. To do Taiwan, yeah. I would be happy if you, if you could yeah, figure yeah. that out. Um, I think for me, I, I mean, I thought about this question. And I was just like, I actually don't think I, I know everyone's like, oh, no regrets because, you know, mm -hmm. but I actually don't think I have any regrets. I think when I was in my 20s, I did ask myself a lot like, oh, should I have taken that job opportunity? Mm -hmm. Should I have done this and that? But I think when you, like you were saying, Janet, something happens when you hit 30 where maybe you've lived enough life to be able to look back on it and be like, oh, this experience needed to happen for me to be where I am today. So mm -hmm. all of the negative experiences that happened mm -hmm. somehow did turn into a positive thing. Or you made it work because you're still living and you're always gonna try and be a better version of yourself. So for me, I think back and I'm just like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any regrets. I think right now, the person that I am today, I'm pretty happy with myself, I guess. We're pretty happy with yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm still evolving and learning and being comfortable in my own skin and feeling you know, just confident and things. those are the things I'm still working on. But um, I'm pretty happy with where you know I am today. So no regrets. Or is that like the meme will come up? No regrets. 
<laughs> Not my guts. <laughs> and that ends today's Dear ABG. If you would like to submit a question, you can either call us or submit a form online. Right here. Ah, we're right here. Right. <laughs> and we're also a podcast called Asian Boss Girls. You can find us on all the podcasting platforms such as Apple or Spotify. Yes. And we will catch you right here next week for another episode of Dear ABG. Bye. 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 Oh. <laughs> I'm sweating. Me too. Ding, da, ding, ding, ding. And so now we're gonna play. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Okay. And we also are a podcast called Asian Boss Girl. It's like, mm. I remember my aunt gave me a. Hell. <laughs> you think I have insects for like relatives or something? Like a little ant like putting lipstick on okay. hell? <laughs>